In this video, I'm going to talk about geometric analogs of Mordell. So geometric uh, versions of uh, Mordell. Uh, and, um, and this Lang, Bombier, and Noguchi. So this is about the density of rational points on varieties. And so these are really both theorems of non-existence when you have positive varieties, so these hyperbolic things. Um, so in order to formulate this, uh, let's, let me, I need to give you a definition of what a function field is. So a function field for me uh, is a field, is the field of uh, rational functions, uh, functions of an irreducible variety over a characteristic zero field. Zero field. Okay, so there's also analogs of this thing for, for positive characteristic, and, but in this video I just want to stick to um, characteristic zero. Um, okay, so what we're going to be doing is, is, is uh, so, so let's take this field to be, K, so let's let K be a function field, okay? So um, okay, so what we can do is we can let k be a function field, and we can look at a variety uh, x over spec k. Okay, so this is just a variety with equations defined over k. And so these equations here, so we can think of k, the thing to think about is like k is equal to the complex numbers that join a single variable t. And so when we look at these equations here, um, what we can do is is we can uh, we, we can spread them out, right? So these parameters t, we can actually think of the, the parameter as actually varying. So we can have this um, here, uh, spec, or not spec, this is maybe some curve y. And so this is cap of y, this is the function field of y. And in this thing here, uh, when, we, when we take the equations and we spread them out, we're gonna get a fancy x. And so this is like a family here of, of maybe other varieties sitting above this variety here, and we uh, we're going to get um, this situation here uh, by by looking at the generic point, so the scheme theoretic point of of this family. So we have this map. This is uh, usually a, a flat family, and we're going to um, we're going to kind of look at this situation here, and this kind of this situation describes this geometric situation where we're now working over a field, uh, and it's gonna describe this, this thing where we have a variety and it's defined by equations which live in a function field. Um, let me give some terminology quickly. Um, so uh, a family is a, a trivial family is, is just a product. Uh, so what's a trivial family? Okay, so we have this curly X, and um, so a trivial family, so we have this, this uh, this y here, and so a trivial family just looks like, well, we take here, uh, maybe some fixed x0, and, um, and this guy is just going to be, uh, this, this fancy x is just going to be the product of these two things, so it's just going to look like this, and this is, this is what, this is the definition of a trivial family, is, is, is something that just looks like a product. Um, okay. So I want to describe now what iso isotrivial means. Um, so, uh, so give me let me give you a definition. So let's take a x over k, a variety over a function field. Over a function field. Um, and we'll say that uh, x is isotrivial. Uh, so we say that x uh, is uh, isotrivial if there exists some some variety over uh, uh, so okay so there's there's kind of many different versions of isotriviality um, but we'll we'll say that uh, if x is x once we go to the algebraic closure is isomorphic to x zero and then uh, times k0 over k uh, alg. Okay, so if we if there exists an isomorphism like so, uh, where 
uh, x0 is defined over k0, k0 is a subfield of k, and then we can, we can put our favorite conditions here on what this means. And so let's say that this extension has positive transcendence degree. Uh, transcendence degree. Degree. Okay, so this is what we're going to define to be isotrivial. Um, so that means that there's going to be some trivial direction in here. Um, this, this isotriviality and, and triviality are, are going to be measured by this Kodaira, the, this Kodaira Spencer class. Um, all right, so let me, let me give you some examples real quick. Uh, so, yeah, so let me just make some, let me make a remark here that this is controlled. So this thing here, controlled by Kodaira Spencer theory. theory. Okay, and I'm going to relegate, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to put this in uh, to, to, I'm going to say that this is going to be talked about in other videos. Okay. Um, okay, that being said, uh, let me just give you some examples of things that are trivial and not trivial. So examples, uh, example of uh, non-trivial. Okay, and showing non-triviality is difficult. Um, so, but here's one over C of T. So this is not isotrivial. Okay, uh, so this is a not not isotrivial, not isotrivial. Okay, let me give you an example of something that's trivial. Um, let me use, also say something real quick why this is non-trivial. This is non-trivial because this is a, the Legendre family of elliptic curves. And I'm told this is somehow the level, this is giving a level two structure uh, to the, the this, this parameterizes the uh, level two modular curve. Um, okay, so uh, let me give you an example of something that's trivial. So this, this, this equation here, uh, so this is trivial, uh, isotrivial, or uh, isotrivial. Okay, so why is it isotrivial? It's isotrivial because we can make a change of variables here. So this thing is t to the one half y uh, squared uh, x cubed plus x. And so this thing is just like y tilde squared. And so to do this base change, we need to, we need to go, well, it's sufficient to go to the, the algebraic closure, but we just need to have the square root of t in there. So after some base change, we can make it so that for every t, this thing looks the same. So this is a, a, a isotrivial family. Uh, this is the type of thing that we're, we're trying to avoid. And so the idea is that isotriviality, um, we should think is uh, as a, uh, as uh, being defined over the constants, over the constants. So the constants of what? So there's a derivative here, and uh, the constants of the derivative are kind of the coefficient field. So if you can like kind of make this thing defined over the constants for some derivative, then uh, this is going to, th that's, what, that's what isotriviality means. Okay. Um, all right. So, so, so now I, I guess I can go back and uh, and and look at these the statements of, of the the theorems that I made in, in previous videos. So let me go back to this this pile of, of notes that we have here, and um, let's just flip back and uh, let me let me just flip through these again. Uh, I'm just gonna go through. I'm just gonna order reorder them real quick. Sorry. Da, 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 da. Probably should have done this before the video. Okay. So Okay, so we have this this faulting theorem now. So now Let's look at this. 
Okay, and this is actually the case of how it was done. So now what we can do is we can take uh, this thing and let's say let's make it be C of T and then here we need to add the additional condition of being non-isotrivial. And this theorem uh, was, if, if you do it like this, the, in this setup, when you have this non-isotrivial condition, um, this was uh, due to a lot of people, Min, Parshin, uh, Arkelov, Grauert. I think Grauert had, has kind of the, one of the big ideas here. Uh, Coleman uh, was involved in, well, I mean, Depends who we want to say. Everyone, there's lots of names involved in, in, in different proofs of these things. But um, uh, here, are, here are just a couple. Uh, so you can do the exact same thing, but you take a non-isotrivial family over a function field. And then it turns out that the K points will be finite. Um, okay, so, so, okay, what else? Um, so these configurations make sense. This, 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 this business makes sense. Um, uh, so this is configuration topology. Okay, so now here uh, we can we can do something similar, but now we need to take a different condi condition. So we need that uh, so k can be c of t, uh, and a can be trace zero. And so this is uh, I'm not going to omit this, but this is due to different people as well. I think Manin. Um, uh, so this this whole this proof has to do with Manin maps and these type of things, but. Uh, okay, what's the extra condition? Okay, I'm blabbing. What's the extra condition? A needs to be trace zero. And so this thing, this condition means that it has no non-trivial, or, or non, uh, no isotrivial abelian subvarieties. So these are closed subvarieties, which are abelian groups, uh, group schemes. Okay, so this is the condition here, and then this is the same. Um, I should say something here that uh, uh, so so this is this is this theorem, and um, uh, one of the conditions that you need so this is all okay. Uh, one of the conditions that's kind of important is that you need um, uh, well okay. So what I was going to say is that under this non-isotriviality condition, you get um, uh, uh, what do you get? So you, you get the finite you get a version of the Mordell theorem for the finite generation of the the, the group of Q point, uh, K points. Um, so here there, there's going to be an analog, but this this isn't exactly correct as stated. Um, so it says something like if um, uh, so let's take uh, X over K K variety of general type, and I, I think that we want. Um, uh, the statement to be some type of contrapositive thing. So let's say if, if, if this is a risky dense, uh, then this implies that, uh, that uh, this thing here descends. So it descends. So this means that they're, they're, it is isotrivial in some component. So i.e. Uh, isotrivial uh, so like, so yeah, so it's isotrivial in the sense that there exists some subfield of, of positive transcendence degree. Uh, and I believe that's the, the correct statement here. Um, what, what the important point is, is that this guy here, Noguchi, uh, together with, uh, uh, Martin Deschamps, uh, 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 they have a theorem that says under a condition that's stronger than general type, they know this to be true in the function field case. And, and this is actually what I want to talk about. Um, okay, so I think that's good. Uh, so let me say that the stronger condition, the, the stronger than general type condition. Um, so the stronger than general type condition is this thing called ample cotangent bundle. Um, so let's say, let's say this. So, uh, so here, let me give a definition first. Uh, let's take E to be a locally free sheaf. And this is just kind of a general definition, uh, free sheaf on X. Uh, and what we can do is, is we can look at, um, uh, we can make this projective bundle. So this is the projective bundle. And so this thing is uh, the relative proj 
on x of the symmetric algebra of E. Um, and so, okay, so, so what's the geometric description of this thing? So the geometric description is, is not the space of lines. Um, so, so there's kind of, let me, let, let me just say this. Let me, so the, what's the, this is the dual space of lines. So, okay, so if E uh, is the sections of some physical vector bundle, so this is the physical vector bundle, physical vector bundle, Okay, so this thing is, you have, we have x, and then over every point here, we're going to have some vector space, okay? And so this is going to be varying continuously here, okay? And uh, so here's E. And so, so this thing uh, is actually the, the space of lines, the dual space of lines of E. Okay, uh, the important properties are that, uh, that there's this map here from here to here to E uh, to X and um, there's a certain canonical sheaf here uh, and it says that uh, there's a line bundle a special line bundle and it pushes forward to the sheaf that we started with so this is kind of an important property and so this is the canonical sheaf here or the ser, maybe the ser sheaf. Okay, so this is a proj, and so uh, you have uh, this, this canonical thing. And um, so this is what we have. And now I'm going to define what it means for a vector bundle to be ample. And so this definition is due to Hartshorn, and it really sorted out uh, a lot of confusion about how to define ampleness uh, for higher, higher rank uh, vector bundles. Uh, and it says that a locally free sheaf on X is ample uh, if and only if uh, O of P of E of 1 is ample. So there was actually this kind of like zoo of conditions um, for, for line bundles to be, or for vector bundles to be ample, uh, I think back in the 70s. And, and, and there's, so and th this one ended up being the, the, uh, the one that ended up sticking around. And it's the, it's the good one. It's the one that works. Um, okay, so so uh, now I can, I can give you the theorem. The theorem says the following. Uh, so the theorem, uh, let me actually just do it on, on a new page. So we're going to replace a stronger condition than general type. The stronger condition is going to be ample cotangent bundle. So let me state the theorem. This is a theorem of uh, Martin Duchamp. And Noguchi. Um, and so there's kind of weaker versions. There's a guy named Mahara who has a weaker version, but uh, but let's ignore that. So let's take a, a variety smooth over a smooth projective variety. Uh, variety over K is going to be a function field. A function field. And uh, then uh, this is going to be a function field of, of a variety over, say, the complex numbers. And if we take this thing now, instead of being general type, we'll take this thing to be ample. So this implies general type. Um, and it says that if these guys here are the risky dense in the algebraic closure, well, then this guy must descend. There exists some variety uh, uh, here uh, over a, a smaller field such that uh, x0 uh, tensored up uh, with k0 to the algebraic closure is isomorphic to uh, here k alg uh, and um, these points minus the these points here are finite. Okay, so this is this is what we have. So this is a descent condition. So descent slash isotriviality. So in, in particular, if you have non-isotriviality, um, then this thing is not going to be Zariski dense. 
Okay, so this is a special case. So this is a, a special case of the lang bombieri noguchi conjecture. Of lang bombieri noguchi. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm I'm going to do some. So so what I want to talk about is uh, so what, one of the questions that people kind of had is 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 okay. So they they have this theorem, but we also have this mordell lang theorem. The mordell lang theorem says if you have a variety and an abelian variety, then you know, then you can prove the theorem. So one of the questions that people can ask is, um, d does um, this uh, this Martin Deschamps uh, this is Martin Duchamp theorem, uh, this Martin Duchamp Noguchi theorem. So Martin Duchamp is one person. Uh, does Martin Duchamp Noguchi actually prove anything? Prove anything? You can't prove without Mordell Lang. Uh, prove anything outside of this Mordell Lang problem. Okay, so in particular, this condition about um, uh, this abelian variety being ample, or sorry, this uh, cotangent bundle of being ample, um, uh, so th this is the same thing. Does th if this is ample, um, does this imply that we get a that that this alpha of x is a closed immersion? So this is a closed immersion. So like. If we're just in the in the hypotheses of this theorem, right? Are are we just in this situation where the we can apply this configuration topology thing, this 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 whole thing? Um, so actually, there this this gets kind of interesting. There's um, so let me say something. There's there's examples. Um, so there's Mumford in in uh, 1979. Uh, he he showed that there's these. Uh, uh, fake projective planes, uh, fake projective planes, okay, and these things are over C, so these things are, are things with uh, the exact same cohomology of C, but then they have this thing being ample, um, and so this gives you examples of things where well, okay, so for projective planes, the Albanese is going to be zero, so you're certainly not going to have an embedding and you have something that's ample. Um, I'll explain why that works in, in, the, in the next video. Uh, but it turns out that these are rigid. So these are rigid, so this means that we're not going to be able to put them in, in families. Uh, we're not going to be able to, uh, uh, you know, have them give us the, these examples, these, these, these uh, things with ample cotangent bundle and that are going to be non-exit trivial which will allow us to, um, uh, which will allow us to, to uh, give, get, cook up counterexamples. So I was looking for this picture. Uh, so th these can't be deformed, can't be put into families, and so we're, we're not going to be able to uh, uh, use them to, to, to take the generic fiber of some family and cook up these examples. Um, but uh, what I am going to talk about in another video is something that, that uh, I proved, um, and I'm going to talk about the proof is why this um, uh, of, of things which are non-rigid and, and uh, have ample cotangent bundle, which have Albanese being zero. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you in the next video if you watch it.